Hello, uh, good morning from California, and thank you for tuning into AccuTrack webinar. Uh, I'm Raj Barman, CEO and founder of uh, AccuTrack. Uh, briefly on AccuTrack, we have a long 24-year history of um, uh, providing services to our client. And one huge reason of our success has been that we continue to provide the best tools and technology. Uh, AccuTrack is a fulfillment company. Uh, whether we are fulfilling your DVD or a book or your product, uh, shipping is a very integral part of that fulfillment. And in our spirit to partner with the best, uh, we choose FedEx. Uh, I'd like to welcome my guest, <laughs> Todd Ecker, the regional manager of international sales from FedEx, to uh, join me on this webinar. Todd? All right. Thank you, Raj, and good morning, everybody. Uh, again, my name is Todd Acker. I'm the Regional Manager for International Sales for FedEx based here in the Northern California market. Um, I have a team of sales professionals that support uh, the FedEx sales effort on an international basis uh, for everything from the Oregon border down to about uh, Monterey, King City, et cetera, here in the, in, in the U.S. I've been with FedEx now for 17 years. A majority of that has been in international sales. Um, however, um, I'm a lot older than I look. <laughs> I've been in the industry now for about 32 years, transportation industry, and um, very much look forward to uh, uh, going through the, uh, uh, the presentation today and, and answer any questions you might have regarding international shipping. So, Raj? Okay. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm excited to bring this uh, webinar on international shipping simply because you know I realize that there are we have two type of clients uh, one who avoid shipping to international market uh, simply because it's too complex and others who are uh, expanding into the market but repeatedly have the same kind of questions uh, what are the different cost um, how to minimize the cost uh, how to handle custom duties VAT and bring clarity on those topic uh, and I knew Todd is the best person to answer this question. So uh, <clears throat> with, so our goal today is to keep this webinar brief and so we have time to answer your questions um, and, um, and you know from you at the end of the of this webinar. Uh, and it's my hope that um, that this whole thing become uh, very informative for you. Okay. Uh, so without um, much uh, further discussion on this, um, Todd, let's start um, with the big picture. Uh, give our listeners some uh, idea of the different shipping method um, that FedEx offer today. Okay, great. <clears throat> so this next slide, as you can see here um, on the international side, these are these are the top international shipping choices that uh, that uh, Raj and his team have to choose from when shipping internationally. Um, on the left side, you can see the FedEx International Parcel Services now. Um, there's quite a few choices here. Um, we can handle everything from an envelope up to a pallet internationally. So we have we have a FedEx for just about anything that that, you, that might be shipped out there. So if we, if we go through the list, you can see that we we do have some uh, a, a couple of, of um, very urgent services, which are the FedEx International Next Flight and FedEx International First. Um, one thing I want to warn about here is that these are are extremely expedited services that normally come at a high cost when, when these are being chosen. And really, you know, you would only want to use these if you had uh, um, something that was extremely urgent, that is, uh, you know, death, you know, the a shipping of a, of a heart or, you know, if, if your CEO lost his, his keys to his French chalet and he had to have those keys immediately, okay? But really, if you go down the line there, FedEx International Priority, that, that is our flagship service. That's a service that was from the very beginning when Fred Smith started FedEx. That was the, the, the first international service out there. So we've got two versions of FedEx International Priority. We've got the parcel side where, you know, anything from an envelope to loose packages. Um, then we also have international priority freight. So we do offer a priority service for, for palletized shipments internationally as well. Um, moving forward, you can see there's an economy service. Now, economy is still an express service. Um, it, it just uh, it, it comes with a, with a bit of a slower transit time. I guess I should mention on the FedEx International Priority that anywhere in the world, we're, we're going to get your shipment anywhere in the world 
from one to three days, depending on, it, on where it's going, with a priority service. So it's one to three days. On the economy side, we're looking more like some, anywhere between three to five days, depending on where in the world it's going. And again, we do offer that on a parcel service as well as, as palletized freight. So um, that's to every country that we serve, which is 220 plus. Now, especially for Canada, specifically for Canada on the international side, we do have a ground service to Canada. Um, and again, again, that is a, it's a time definite service depending on where it's going. Um, all of our services come with, on, on the um, parcel side, come with a time definite um, delivery commitment, okay? So um, we're offering um, to get your, your product to the destination on time and everything comes with a published commitment on that transit time. One thing I wanted to talk a little bit about on the on the express side, I know in many cases you might wonder, okay, is, do, do, does FedEx offer any kind of, of, of insurance service? Um, we do offer a declared value for loss and damage, so if you have a product that is valued at, let's say, $1,000, $1,000 worth of you know, um, cell phones or something, um, and as long as you are declaring a value for carriage at the time of shipping, then uh, in case of a loss or damage that's you know, FedEx responsibility, um, you will be reimbursed for that. So we, 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 do, uh, um, we do cover that in, in case of the possibility of loss or damage. Okay, so now that's on the express side. Um, especially in the e-commerce industry and, and many other, other industries out there, um, many people are looking for a more cost-effective solution. And we do have something. We have something that's called FedEx International Mail Service, okay? Um, this is a, a, a product that is a, kind of a blend of our, our, our express product and then using postal authorities from around the world. So there's two choices here. You've got your, your international mail service standard and your international mail service priority. Um, these come with, with different commit, um, transit time commitments. Um, each, um, um, it, it's a fully customizable solution for, um, for using with uh, low value, low weight type products. Um, something where, you know, if it's, a, if it's a low value product, you know, it's pretty, pretty difficult to ship something that maybe it's costing your customer 40 or $50 and then asking them to also pay $20, $25 in transportation. So PIMS is an alternative for that. And by blending our express service with the mail service of the, of the destination countries, we're able to offer some, some very low, um, low cost per, per package. Um, in addition to the, the regular PIMS service, there's another product not mentioned here, which is called, uh, it, it's a, uh, um, it's a, it's a product where we can also provide a a um, um, a, a delivery confirmation um, along with the FedEx mail service uh, product. So so there are there are different versions of, of FIMS. Now um, the way this works is you know we would pick up at our, our shippers location. Um, we would provide boxes or bags in which um, our customer will load all their, their various pieces for, for the FIMS mail service. Um, all, we would, all that would be required on, on the, each of the packages is a address label um, and a CN22, which is a form of a commercial invoice. Basically, it's just a, a sticker that, that explains what the product is and the value. What happens at that point in time is we pick it up right along with the, with the normal express product. Um, we'll take it to our mail, our mail center, in this case from California, it's down in LA. And from there, we'll sort it by country. Um, we'll, we'll sort it by country. FedEx will apply the, uh, the indicia, okay, so the, the stamp to, to get this uh, delivered. And then we'll fly it um, via aircraft into the, the various regions. So if, if there's a bunch of a mail going into uh, the United Kingdom, um, we would fly the mail into Royal Mail, we would insert it into the Royal Mail um, standard mail services. Okay, so this is obviously a, it's a great selection for some very low cost um, alternatives to, uh, to lower value type shipments. Now, FIMS does not come with declared value insurance um, because we're, you know, FedEx, we, uh, it, we only take it to the country and then insert it into the mail, um, um, the mail operation there, but it's, so it's not insured. Um, and, you know, the delivery standards are actually pretty good. So, um, if you're going with the premium, um, we, we expect that you're, you're going to see a delivery within four to seven days, including uh, 
transit within the country. For the standard um, uh, service, you're going to look at 7 to 11 days, plus whatever the, the, the various mail standard would be um, within the country. So you have two choices. You have your express product choices, and then you have the FIMS International Mail Service. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so just to kind of reiterate the fact uh, from FedEx, parcel service is, um, you know, you take the shipment from our location uh, all the way to the destination on FedEx, FedEx carriers and FedEx planes, whereas the FIM service is you pick up from our location and take it to the destination country and use the local um, postal service to distribute mail over there. So one comes with Correct, fully, yeah. one comes with fully time definitive service and in more of insured value. Other comes uh, to manage. Uh, uh, in a cost-effective manner. So I wanted to let listeners know that we offer uh, all these services uh, for you through our fulfillment center, fulfillment system. So you have that choice to make, um, you know, in order to ship your product. Okay. So after we have done with um, decided on the shipping, the next thing, um, uh, the next thing uh, is, uh, you know, we have to worry about our custom duties and taxes. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, there are two uh, costs to ship. One is the shipping cost, and one is custom duties and taxes. So if you can g bring some clarity on to our listener, what are custom duties and taxes? Sure. Um, again, so I'm, I'm glad we're talking about this because uh, in many cases, shipping internationally, um, it's really not understood what the additional costs would be associated with shipping above and beyond the transportation costs. So um, when it comes to duties and taxes. So you know, a customs duty is basically it's a, it's a tariff that's placed on a, on a commodity um, that's going to be delivered into the destination country. Um, it's, it, there's also taxes that are part of this, this whole process. And within the tax side, there's something called VAT. Now what VAT stands for is value-added tax, okay? And that basically is a, it, it really is a form of a, of a sales tax. It travels through the, um, the entire supply chain. So so, for instance, if, if, if a product's being shipped, uh, let's say it's going into the, uh, the EU, um, there's going to be a VAT assessed delivering it to the recipient. Now, if the recipient turns around and sells that to somebody else, then they will, they're, they're going to charge a VAT to that recipient as well. And so the way VAT works is it, it's, a, it's a reconciled at the end of a, uh, of a tax um, period with, within the, the business where they will, they will um, cross-reference what VAT has been paid out and what VAT has been received, and that will that will come up with a total that they, they, they then have to include in their taxes. So there's customs duties and taxes, and there's there's also a, a, a tax called VAT that could potentially be part of the, um, the clearance process, okay? So um, a lot of a lot of what, what determines the, um, the amount of the duty and tax um, has a lot to do, in many cases, you know, for the most part, it has to do is, is what is the product, what's the description, of the product, you know, are we shipping tennis shoes, are we shipping laptops, etc. There there's going to be a different custom duty um, based on, on what the commodity is, okay? So it, 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 it's going to be mostly based on the, the product description. It's also going to be based on what is the value of the product, okay? So for if a, if a, bat, if a, if a, if a duty is, is, is 10% and the product is, is valued at $1,000, well, then there's going to be a duty. Pretty simple. Um, Country of manufacture will play a part in this. The destination country will, will play a part in this. Additionally, if there are any free trade agreements between the two countries, the, the origin and destination countries, um, that could uh, help as far as limiting some of the costs associated with with, uh, with duties. Good. So, uh, you know, so custom duties and taxes are um, obviously calculated based on cost of uh, the product. Uh, and obviously more rules and regulation of that country. Uh, the part that always uh, important to understand is what we call the nature of the product or um, what we call uh, this harmonized code. So that is a little difficult to understand. So if you want to bring some clarity on that topic. Absolutely. So uh, harmonized code. So as you can imagine, there are, there are hundreds of, of different languages in the world, correct? So um, what the harmonized code does is a uniform way of classifying a certain commodity based on numbers. So 
um, you know, if, again, if you're shipping your shoes to, you know, different countries around the world, um, there's a different word for shoes depending on where you're shipping. The harmonized code system does, what this classify system does, is it, it, it actually describes every product that might be potentially shipped around the world by a number. And this number is the same regardless of where the shipment is going um, you know, within the world. It's a 10-digit number. The first six digits really are, are what um, determine the general category for the commodity, okay? So the first six numbers of a harmonized code are going to be exactly the same no matter which country you're shipping to in the entire world. The last four numbers, um, for the most part, are specific to the destination country. Um, but the best practice is, is, you know, as long as you have the first six codes, uh, first six numbers of the harmonized code, uh, it will be understood in that country that, okay, this is a pair of shoes or this is a laptop, et cetera. Okay, so um, it, it, again, it's, it's used by the rest of the world. Uh, the number is the same whether you're shipping to Brazil or to Japan. The first six numbers are the same. Um, and it, it's just really a, a, a very easy way to describe your product regardless of where it's going in the world. It just it, it, it reduces all confusion in that area. Now, one thing I wanted to talk a little bit about was uh, on the export side in the U.S., the Department of Census requires uh, export declaration whenever there's a shipment that, that includes uh, one commodity, one HS code, okay, one harmonized code commodity um, that exceeds $2,500. The Department of Census wants to know about that, so we need to we need to uh, um, you know register that. So um, harmonized codes are are you know it's it's greatly recommended that we utilize that along with a proper description on every shipment that's being exported. Now some people will ship without using the harmonized code; they'll just give a description, which is which can work. But it, when you do that, you you do kind of leave open the opportunity for the destination customs to assess duty based on whatever they think it should be. So a good example would be if you're, if you're exporting pumps around the world, pumps come in different forms. You could have a water pump, you could have an oil pump, you could have a heart pump. Um, each of those might have a different duty associated with them. So if, if something's being exported and you're using it in a description, but you're not using a harmonized code, destination customs is open to go ahead and just choose they want to make money. Whichever harmonized code would apply. Yeah, exactly. The, the highest duty rate harmonized code. So it is important to include the harmonized code when you do ship export along with the, the proper the proper description. Okay. So now, how do you find out what your harmonized code is? Well, hopefully, um, hopefully you know what that is. Um, and if you're if you're purchasing your product from someone else, they would know what the harmonized code is. But at all times, you can actually look up your harmonized code. There's many ways many ways of doing it. Um, you know, you can go to the you can go to the U.S. Customs website. You can go to uh, you, know, you can just type it into Google. Um, there is a very very um, powerful tool at the FedEx website. Keyword GTM. GTM stands for Global Trade Manager. Basically, what you would do is you would go into this tool. You would type what your commodity is. Again, if you're shipping laptops, you type in laptop, and it would it would bring up the the uh, um, the headline harmonized code for laptops, and if there are different uh, categories underneath that, it will stair step it down, and you just keep clicking until you get to the commodity that's exactly what you're shipping. Again, if we're using if we're using uh, pumps as as, a, as an example, if you were to go in and type in pumps, it's going to bring up various types of pumps, okay? And then if you're if you're shipping a water pump, you would, you would go down the line, you would see water pump, you click on that, and that might even break it down a little bit more as far as okay, water pumps you know, pumping 10 gallons per minute, water pumps pumping 25 gallons per minute. So it's really, really, really simple to go into this tool and, and identify what your, your proper harmonized code is. Yeah. Again, it's a, it's, a, it's a free tool at FedEx.com, Global Trade Manager is, is, the, is the name of the product. Good. Now, this, is, this was important. I wanted to, uh, you know, uh, reiterate the fact that it's very critical to define harmonized code for every product uh, or every SKU that we are shipping for you, uh, it will streamline the process, and uh, you know, and there is no confusion in terms of what the taxes would be calculated because now you're controlling the product harmonized score and you're defining the value of the product. Yeah. So uh, in the same, uh, uh, if uh, uh, on this topic, uh, if we if the key thing is that the product has to flow through the custom 
you know efficiently uh, so what are the main things uh, that we need to kind of be aware of uh, I know we we handle this piece but I thought our client our, our listeners should know that uh, what's critical for you know custom to flow with you know a product to flow through custom absolutely so again Raj so yeah AccuTrack did a really good job of making sure the proper documents are prepared for export um, it's funny you know um, I'll, I'll be asked from time to time you know what are the top reasons um, for customs anywhere in the world to have issue with, with a particular shipment being imported into their country and and um, I can tell you that the, the majority of the time it's, it's all about the, the description okay the description is the biggest issue that causes problems um, when you're when you're shipping something internationally that along with you know the value um, but to be specific on the customers form so you've got the commercial invoice the commercial invoice is going to describe the product it's going to tell you what the commodity is with the proper description the proper HS code and the, the, the correct value um, you know it's 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 very it's essential that that there's accurate information on the commercial invoice because as you can see here on this slide there's a lot of things that happen with, with, with when you when you provide a a, um, a clear and concise commercial invoice many of these things you can avoid many of these problems you minimize customs questions um, and the event, the potential of an examination what FedEx does is when we receive a shipment um, as soon as it's wheels up as soon as that plane is taking off we're we've already sent that information to the destination of the country to try to pre-clear the product so once once the airplane lands it's all uploaded you've got a you've got a, a line coming off the, the plane going in two directions one direction is pre-clear the other one is further examination okay probably about 98 percent of the shipments that we handle um, are pre-cleared um, mostly because we were getting good information on the commercial invoice um, and they continue on to the destination so again being specific really helps minimize any kind of delays at the time of, of entry into into the country um, by doing this you know you, you were We're not going to have to deal with the, the local customs authorities uh, and have to provide any other. Again, proper classification, we already, we already covered this, but actually reduce your duty rates. Like my example. With the pumps. If you just put pumps on there and that's a water pump, uh, has a duty on there and you don't figure out the um, by, by having everything very clear, you're going to speed up the clearance time for customs, obviously, which is in the end, in the end is going to reduce delivery times. It's going to it's going to get your stuff to your customers much much more, but much faster with, with limited problems, which in that in that case will then improve your customer satisfaction. Okay. Now, one thing I, I also want to talk about, and, and Raj's team is very well aware of this. They do a great job um, when, when they when they when they fill this information out. Um, we've got you know we've got customs authorities all over the world that. Uh, um, if they notice issues with your paperwork, they could potentially fine. They could potentially remove ex, you know, import privileges. So it's really critically essential that the, the specific information is clear and concise on the commercial invoice. Great. Makes sense. So um, uh, just to kind of recap uh, uh, our webinar discussion today, uh, to sum it up, we saw that there are two ways to uh, ship product use FedEx uh, all the way uh, or choose one of the services or depending on the your business needs or choose FIMS where FedEx take the product from one location and inject into the postal service of the destination country uh, second we realize that how uh, critical custom duties and taxes are and what factors are influence in calculating them uh, and especially uh, our understanding of harmonized code um, and more importantly, we learned that you know if, if we do define our custom form properly, uh, it, um, it it is, it sails through the customs faster and also have more precise and uh, no surprises on your way. Okay, so uh, this kind of sums up our webinar. Um, if you have any uh, specific questions uh, for Todd or me, uh, you're welcome to put it in the chat room or. Um, if you want to even raise your uh, hand uh, through this webinar, 
I can en enable you to speak directly to uh, everyone, your choice. So um, uh, if, I, if you have any specific questions, I'll have to kind of see that coming up. Uh, it's a good opportunity and Todd is here. Uh, he's an expert. <laughs> oh, there, there's that expert word again, but uh, definitely if it's, please invite him. If there's any questions, um, um, ask away. I'm, I'm open to anything internationally. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, oh, well, one thing uh, you may want to clarify uh, one of the questions uh, is, um, you know, we have all this um, relationship with NAFTA, uh, especially. Uh, so uh, uh, how do uh, do we pay us, you know, how do you uh, clarify whether, do, you know, that doesn't NAFTA automatically implies that no custom duties to, uh, uh, to Canadian and Mexican shipment? Is that, um, uh, and how does that work? Okay. Um, yes, NAFTA, you know, I think it's been, some, you know, uh, 20 years at this point that, that NAFTA has been part of, uh, part of trade. And there, there are various other free trade uh, agreements that are in place at this point as well. Um, but with NAFTA, definitely it, it, North American Free Trade Agreement um, basically says that when there's business being done between um, Canada, the U.S., and Mexico, and if it's, if it's products that are, are produced within those countries, that they can freely move between the borders um, duty-free. Um, so there's some calculations that are required to determine what, you know, if, if, you, um, if it's a fully uh, produced uh, product within one of those three countries, then there's, there, there's never a question. But uh, if you're using parts from different parts of the world and putting them together, creating a, 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 a new item, there are some calculations that are required to determine whether it's duty free and after or not. But one thing that's important on that is if you are shipping product that can be um, um, where the you, you can relieve yourself of duties and tax of duties based on, uh, on on the North American Free Trade Agreement. There has to be a statement on the on the commercial invoice, basically stating that this is part of NAFTA. There's also a NAFTA, NAFTA CI, but what we see in most cases, as long as the statement is on the commercial invoice stating that this is part of NAFTA, that it it, it, um, um, it takes into consideration all the requirements of NAFTA, you should be fine with that. Okay. Uh, I, I have enabled um, um, uh, inviting Oscar to uh, ask his question. Um, if you want to speak or I can. Um, Oscar, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Well, yeah. I also wrote the question, but... Um... I was basically wondering what's the advantage of using PIMS versus USPS, uh, given that both use local local mail and that you know both do not offer insurance. And a follow-up question would be, you know, how does PIMS compare in cost versus yeah. USPS? Sure, sure, great, great question, um, and. Uh, you know the advantage, I think, in my opinion, using FIMS versus uh, versus USPS is, and really, I'm going to answer your second question by saying that generally there are there is some savings to cost when when the USPS um, um, places a a charge on each package. That's based on that one particular individual package. Okay, um, with with FIMS, we're asking you just to provide a, a label with with the address label on it. Or with the address on it, um, and basically what we do is we charge by the pound. Okay, so if there's if you're shipping a one-pound product, let's say, um, and your rate is is ten dollars a pound for FIMS, um, and you're shipping but you're shipping you know, ten of these, your your rate would be one dollar for that particular package. Okay, U.S. Postal they're going to apply a postal rate based on each individual package. We don't do that. We add it all up. We charge you a per pound basis for all of your products. Okay, so again, if you've got a three pound, uh, you know, again with the, with the with the ten dollar FIMS rate per pound, let's say, and your your package weighs three pounds, um, you're shipping, you know, three of them will be point nine pound or, or will be nine pounds. So um, you're really going to be paying a little bit less than three dollars per package. Um, that's that's one thing. So the rate will be better with FIMS in just about every case that we've seen. Um, secondly, um, there is one part that is is handled uh, via you know, express aircraft where we you know we'll, we'll take 
get and dump it into the destination uh, local authority. Um, and um, you know, it, there's usually a turnaround time of, of one to two days at the sort center. So we, we, in most cases, we do get it to destination country um, a day or two before the U.S. Postal Service will. Yeah. So I hope that answered your question. Yeah, good. So just kind of uh, the cost, cost is a big thing. I mean, uh, there's a huge cost saving using through FIMS. So I'll reiterate that fact. And of course, a little bit more efficient because the product is going from us straight to the destination country on FedEx planes and, and then kind of distributing through uh, local mail system. Okay. Uh, another question has uh, come uh, here from uh, quite a few uh, from Adam Cohen. You know, he's asking if we run an e-commerce solution, can we collect the VAT and not the duty from the consumer at the time of sale and have the consumer pay the duty when the customer picks up the package? Okay, that's a good question. Um, and we, we've, we've had this before and, and there is a process by which we can split duties and taxes. Um, so, I mean, it, it's something that um, is a little bit complicated to explain, but um, I guess the answer to your question is yes, we can. Um, we can split the duty from the taxes and then bill the recipient one or the other, billing the shipper with the other, yeah. with the, 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 the second one. So that is possible, yes. All right, next question is from Beth uh, Alexander. She's asking that AccuTrack shipping calculator shows uh, the following rates for 24 ounce book to Paris, France, which is three or four times the cost of book itself. Uh, how is that affordable? FedEx economy or international priority, both are showing 95 to $100, which is correct. Um, our calculator shows the retail value of what FedEx charges. Um, I would um, like to, um, uh, uh, invite you to speak to me after this webinar and you know we would structure some very cost-effective choices for you um, our calculator is designed to generally give you retail value and uh, based on your international strategy uh, we can uh, tell you whether to choose to go with economy service for your book versus uh, FIM service and I will give you a much affordable prices to um, fit your business needs okay um, other question has come from uh, Mitch uh, Nishi. He says, Todd, I have noticed the shipping charges to Canada are much higher than shipping charges domestically. Um, <clears throat> I guess, um, well, basically, um, the ch shipping charges for Can Canadians are, um, um, it seems to be, he says, higher than, uh, uh, or at least uh, com when you're shipping it to even other international destination at times, you know, using a FIMS method, um, you know, when you're comparing a FIMS method shipment to international versus shipping to Canada, they sometimes Canadian shipment seems higher on FIMS method. Uh, Mitch is one of our client who's looking into this service and we realized that for some reason when we were using FIMS uh, and we looked at the cost of shipping to Canada, uh, we didn't see much disadvantage using FIMS. Okay, so um, first of all with FIMS, um, the rate per pound is going to be the same regardless of where it's going in the world. Um, so if I understand the question, um, I think it's like the, the question is, you know, how is it possible that FIMS is not a great a greater savings over say an express service? Is that what's being asked to Canada? Uh, say that again? So is the question being asked that They've noticed that a, a FIMS rate to Canada well, is the FIMS rate to Canada was not as um, discount or, or was almost same or a little bit on the higher side to other international destination. We sort of expected Canadian shipment to be a lot cheaper. Um, well, uh, for FIMS, the rate's going to be exactly the same anywhere you're shipping in the world, yeah. because again, you're you're being billed by the by a, by a per pound basis now. If you're comparing FIMS against an express service, yeah. um, it is possible that FIMS might be more expensive um, depending on the weight of, of, of the shipment, okay? Yeah. So, the, for example, if again, if, if the FIMS rate is, and I'm just throwing this out there, is $10 per pound, um, and if you've got, if you're shipping three pounds, that's pretty cheap because you're less than $3 per shipment, right? Yeah. So now, if you're trying to ship a product that's 20 pounds via FIMS, and you're, you've got $10 per Pound, that's two hundred dollars. So there, there is going to be a break-even point there where 
you know, maybe it's better to ship via uh, Express using an economy service. Right. Depend and, and depends. Okay. So it's going to be at the higher weights for the most part. Okay. Uh, if that doesn't answer the question, please please, uh, please let me know. Okay. But but when it comes to fins, shipping fins to Canada, or shipping fins to Japan, or shipping fins to Germany, they're very comparable. The rate, yeah. The, well, the rate's going to be exactly the same because we 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 set our rates up for fins based on one rate for the entire world yeah. per pound. Next question comes from Deanna. Uh, she asks, what shipping, when shipping internationally, who typically pays the customs duties and VAT? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. I can't hear you. I really love this. These are really, really good questions. So, can you hear me? Uh, now hear you better, yes. Hello. Okay, okay. So, real good question. Um, <clears throat> majority of the time, if you're shipping internationally, you're going to bill duties and taxes to the recipient. Okay? Um, it, it's like anything else. If, 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 this, if your customer in Germany was going into the store and buying it, they're going to pay a tax, right? Um, and uh, in many cases, uh, the VAT is recoverable by the recipient as well. So. I, I can tell you that high 90% of the time, what we see is that duties and taxes are always billed to the recipient or to a you know, third-party importer or something like that. But the shipper rarely will pay the duties and taxes. Yeah. Sometimes they like to offer a landed cost, which is very possible to do. Um, so we, we, we make it very, very simple to do it either ways. Yeah. More questions coming your way. All right. So this question comes from John uh, Woodford. John says, if, you, if we are sending, say, 100 parcels to the same overseas country, do you do any special rates where 100% are shipped together and then split up when they reach the destination country? So, um, and also a follow-up question on that one. Regarding FIMS, can we use this from the UK to the US, to the, say, the U US? Okay. Unfortunately, right now, FIMS uh, is an export, U.S. export product, so that would answer the second question. Um, the uh, the first question, as far as um, offering um, a different type of service or, or costs uh, process when there's multiple shipments all going to the same country, um, we do have some some other products out there that that um, if you are shipping multiple pieces, whether it's export or or import. Um, we have a product where it can all be um, um, bundled together and moved as one shipment into the country of destination. And then from there, once it's been cleared, uh, sent out to the various uh, um, recipients. Um, it's, a, it's a product that uh, it's called the International Priority Direct Distribution. Um, but I can tell you, for every one of our products, if, you, if you've got a... Uh, uh, if you do a huge release with multiple pieces, um, a lot of what we look at when it comes to some of the rates and things like that are, are based on volume. So there could definitely be some, uh, some associated savings of shipping that way. Okay. Um, another question comes from Deanna. She says, so if you're using an e-commerce system, how do we add custom duties to the shipping costs paid by the customer? We... Um, well, there is a way to provide a landed cost. Um, up, fr up front, you, you know, there's a calculator that we have. Again, it's on Global Trade Manager, um, where the duties and taxes can be calculated up front um, and then just added to the, the sale yeah. price. So if you have a $100 commodity um, and it's shipping to, to Japan and the, the duty is 10%, you know, there's an additional ten dollars that you collect from your customer. If you're, if you're providing a landed cost, and that is where you're you're paying for the transportation, you're paying for the duties and taxes, um, and you just want to bill your customer up front for that, we we can do that. We can provide you with with the uh, the duty and tax amount up front. Yes. Um, we can also build into a we can also build into a uh, a shopping cart a a landed cost uh, calculator. So it is very doable indeed. So I would also just sort of add to it, um, you know, if you do decide that you, you want to pay for um, 
duties and taxes and not your uh, uh, person receiving it, then it, it has to be a, only a FedEx service, not FIMS, um, because FIMS are, are not uh, designed to handle that. Okay. Um, anything else? More questions? Um, okay. So those are typical questions we have. I, uh, I don't have any more questions right now showing up. I think we kind of covered um, Again, uh, thank you again uh, for uh, everyone who joined. Uh, it was it was a pleasure to uh, do this, and Todd, thank you. Yeah, Raj, uh, make, make, you know, please, um, if you don't mind, g give out my email address, okay? Yeah. For anyone who attended today's um, presentation, if there are any follow-up questions that you might have, if you didn't understand you know, some of the answers or what have you, yeah. um, please feel free to, uh, to shoot me an email right there, tlacker at fedex.com. Yeah. Um, I'll answer any questions you have and make sure that you, you you're, you're put in the right direction. Okay. Yeah. Great. And so, if not, uh, again, yeah, you have Todd's email. If not, you can always send me an email, and I'm happy to connect you to Todd also. Okay. Thanks again. Thank you very much. Have a have a great day. Thanks again, Todd. Okay. Bye now. Bye. -bye.